Hey guys, thanks for joining me for the last episode of our HitFilm Basics Masterclass. Hopefully you've learned a few things over the last couple of tutorials and you want to share them with the world. And that's what we're going to take a look at today, is how to export your video so that you can upload it to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. Before we actually take a look at exporting, there are three terms you need to know, and that's because I'm going to be mentioning them quite a bit throughout. The first is in-out area. If we take a look at HitFilm here, the in-out area is defined by this orange highlight here up on the top. And you can see that the orange area ends at 5 minutes. This is the default. You can change the default if you want in the File Options menu. So if I were to export the in-out area right now, I would only export 5 minutes of it when the actual vlog itself is closer to just over 7. This is a problem we see quite a bit, so pay attention to where your in-out area is. You can adjust it by clicking and dragging. I can make it so that it covers the entire vlog. I can adjust the beginning as well. If I right click, I can also see a few different options. So I can set to contents which will set the in-out area to the entire duration of video on the timeline. And I can also set it to the view, and this will change it to just over eight minutes. So if you need to export just a piece of your video, you can do that with the in-out area. I can also set the in-out area with keyboard shortcuts. So I can come over here and press either this button here or the I key for in. And then I can come over and select either this key or the O key for out. The next thing you need to know is contents, and that is the entire duration of either video or audio on your timeline. So in this case, the contents range from zero to about seven minutes and around seven seconds. So there is a difference between the in-out area, which can be shorter or longer, and contents, which is the entire duration of video. The last thing you need to know is default preset. This is how your video will be exported, so the format. You can find the default preset over here in this window default preset. And right now YouTube 1080p is selected because that's the one I typically use the most. We'll take a look at all these presets a bit later, but for now just remember that it's set to YouTube 1080p. So now we can take a look at actually exporting. There are a few ways to go about this. The first is to come up to File, Export. This will open up your file browser and you can give it a name. And you'll notice that it says save as type mp4 and that's the only option in there. This is because the default preset is set to YouTube 1080, which is an MP4. If I were to hit save now, it would automatically start exporting inside of the queue, which you can see here. I'll go ahead and remove that task, which will also cancel it. So that's one way is to go to file export. You also have this export button here on the timeline, which does the exact same thing. So it opens up the window, you can type in a name and then hit save. There's also the export now option, which is in this drop down here. So export now, and then you have two options. So in out area or contents. And this is where you need to know what exactly it is you want to export. In this case, I would choose contents because I want my entire vlog to be exported. The thing about export now is that it doesn't allow you to choose a name. If I were to click contents here, it would immediately start exporting with the name editor, which is the name of the timeline I'm on. So I'll go ahead and remove that. The export now option uses the default preset as the type to export. Now let's take a look at the export queue, which is in this export panel here, which is to the right of the viewer. Up here you have an option to change the default preset, which is exactly the same as before. So I could choose something like YouTube 4K or 720. The queue is empty at the moment. Let me go ahead and add something to it. So in this case, I'll come over here and select add to queue. Then I'll choose contents. This will add it to the queue. It tells me the name, what preset it's using, the duration, progress, which hasn't started yet, and the output. If I select this link here, I can choose where on my computer the file will be saved. I can also choose a name as well. This time though, if I hit save, it won't automatically start exporting. It's in a queue, it's waiting to be started by me. If you notice that the duration is incorrect, like you accidentally chose contents instead of in out area, you can change it quite quickly by clicking this icon here you can see that the time code changed to five minutes, which is the in-out area I have down here. So you don't have to delete it and re-add if you choose the wrong option. I can also change the type that this video exports as. So it got added as a YouTube 1080p video, and that's because I have that preset selected as default. However, I can change it if I want to something like GoPro Cineform, which will maintain a lot of quality. And you'll notice that it changes to mob because that's just what a GoPro Cineform is. Another way to add things to the queue, if you want to add individual clips, you can right click them and select add to export. 
And again, this will get added as 1080p because it's the default. If I were to change this to something like PNG sequence, and then maybe I can click and drag and highlight all of these clips and drag them to the timeline, they will all get added as PNG sequences. They each have their own output link, so if I wanted to change the location of one of them, I could do that. Or if I select multiple, I can change them all and go to something like pictures, select that folder, and now they will all change to that location. I'll go ahead and remove these tasks for now. Something that comes up once in a while is that people want to export their video as one single file, but it's exporting as multiple clips individually. So the reason that's happening is because they're highlighting all of the clips, right clicking and then selecting add to export. As you can see, this adds all of the clips individually to the queue, which if you want that, that's great. The way to avoid that if that's not the result you want is to not highlight all of the clips at once. Just add it to the queue and it will add as a single file which will be all of your clips together. An important thing to remember is that when you add something to the queue, it takes a snapshot of the project at that specific time. So I've got the edit in the queue right now. If I were to come down here and make a bunch of changes like move clips around or make them longer or add new footage, and then if I were to start the export now, those changes would not be reflected in the file. The entry in the queue now is a snapshot of the project a couple minutes ago when I hadn't made all those changes. So if I wanted those changes to be reflected, I would have to re-add it to the export queue. And you can see the difference because this one is still seven minutes and this one is now five and a half. So those changes are now implemented. So now you know how to add things to the queue, let's take a look at the presets you might use to get that done. If I come up here to the presets tab, you can see a list of built-in presets. Depending on the result you're wanting to get out of your export, you might want to choose a different preset. So for example, these top three here, which are MP4s, you can see here in the comments that it says compressed. That means you'll get much smaller file sizes, but the quality won't be quite as high. In comparison, you might see some that say lossless, which means you're not losing quality. And in the case of GoPro Cineform, we have highest quality visually lossless, which is 12-bit. This is a way to get the most quality out of your export, but the file size will be pretty big. An important thing to note with each preset is the resolution. So you can see, for example, YouTube 2160p has a set resolution of 3840 by 2160, while the GoPro Cineform says from source. Another issue that people run into is they export their video, but it's not the right size. And this is because they've got a 720p video in the editor timeline, but they've chosen to export in 4K. And so that height and width doesn't match. You can create your own custom presets to determine your own format, resolution, frame rate, and other things to get a custom result. For example, something that we do often is export a video in widescreen, so for YouTube or Facebook, and then we export as a square for Instagram. But there's not currently a square option inside of the export presets. Now, we do have options for from source, so that would work in terms of resolution, but these are the higher quality results, and we don't really need an Instagram video to be lossless or 12-bit. So let's base it off of something that already exists, like the YouTube 1080p preset, which is meant to be compressed. So what I'll do is right click that option and select edit preset. This won't actually edit the preset itself, it'll create a copy. I'll go ahead and give it a name, so Instagram. And then let's take a look at the dimensions here. So I'll go ahead and uncheck dimensions and change it from 1920 to 1080. So 1080 by 1080 is a square. I'll leave the frame rate as from source. And then if you find your videos are still too big in file size, you can try lowering the bitrate. Select save a copy, and the preset will appear down here in the user presets folder. So now we've got that Instagram preset ready, if I come back to the viewer for the editor itself, generally you want your editor settings and your export settings to match. If you start trying to mix and match them, you're gonna get some strange results. So what I'll do is come down to the project settings, unlink the height and width, and set the width to 1080p as well. And this will crop the video into a square. Now, if I add that to the queue, we can come over to preset, and now Instagram is an option there. Then if I hit start exporting, you'll get a little preview window down here, and we can see that that video will be square when it's finished. A good thing to know is that you don't have to stop working just because you're exporting. The export will take place in the background, so I could come over to the viewer and continue making edits and continue working while it exports. A common question we get is how do I export with transparency? 
To do that, what you're going to want to do is select one of the export presets that has the word alpha in the name. So either an uncompressed AVI or a PNG sequence or a GoPro Cineform 12-bit is also an option here. If you export your project and notice a watermark, which can take the form of a HitFilm Express logo or a piano note sound, it's because you're either using add-on effects that you haven't purchased or your software is unactivated. To remove the watermark, you can either purchase the add-ons that you're using or delete them in the effects panel. So in this case, I would just come over here into the controls and remove the effect that is an add-on. To activate the software, if it's not activated, come up to File, Options, and then to the Activation tab. If you're not activated, you should see a button to do so. And that is it for this HitFilm Basics Masterclass. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you guys learned a few things. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. You can follow us on social media to keep up to date with what we're working on. And we also upload weekly filmmaking and visual effects tutorials here on the YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. We've got several more masterclasses on our FX Home website. So if you're interested in making a gaming channel or Star Wars effects, or a spy movie, maybe a quick Western film, or recreating a famous scene from Godzilla, definitely give those a watch. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.